Hello there everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 73. As always, I'm Shane. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. You can also go to codekarate.com, check out the other Daily Dose of Drupal videos, enter to win the book contest if it's still available, and sign up for the newsletter. Today we're going to be going over a module that I've used quite frequently on both Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 sites, and that is the 5 star module. What this module is going to allow us to do is set it up to rate content. Let's say you have an article or you have a product and you want the ability to rate it based on a star system. Maybe it's five stars, four stars, whatever, whatever number of stars you want, you can set up the module to work with you and to rate that content. This module also requires the voting API, so you'll need to make sure you get that installed as well. And it has views integration, which can be useful if you need to display a list of the highest rated items. So that's is that's probably going to be something you're go going to want to look at. We're not going to go over the views integration today. We're going to go through two scenarios. The first, you have an article that you want someone to just be able to read and rate without having to leave a comment. The second one is actually forcing the user to leave a comment when they leave a rating and not allowing them to rate without leaving a comment. So the first one's useful for articles as I mentioned before if you want someone just quickly vote on something. The other one can be useful if you want them to leave a product review and leave a rating on a specific product. So let's go ahead and get started. We have a pretty much brand new test site here that I'm logged into as the admin. I've already downloaded the modules for five star and voting API. I'm just going to go ahead and turn those both on. I'm then going to come in and set the permissions for the five star module. And you'll notice that we're going to give the ability to rate content to authenticated users. And I'm going to save that. And because I'm going to need a test user, I'm going to go ahead and create a new user. And give them a simple user account so I can test it. And you can see I have two articles. The first thing we're going to do is come to the configuration page on the five star module and that's going to allow us just to look at one quick thing. We don't really need to worry about it too much, but it basically allows you to set multiple voting tags. You really only need to use this if you're going to have multiple ratings on one node or one piece of content. We only want one rating, so we're just going to leave the default vote. You could, of course, add multiple, just separate it with a comma. The next step is going to be adding the field to our content type. This is a little different than the Drupal 6 version, so if you used the Drupal 6 version in the past and haven't used the Drupal 7 version, it has changed a little bit. We're going to go to Manage Fields on the article content type, and we're going to add a 5-star rating field. We're going to call this Article Rating, and we're going to set stars rated while viewing. So when they actually are viewing the node, not creating the node, they can set the rating. We'll save this. We'll leave everything else at its default. I'm going to move this up so it's a little I guess it doesn't really need to, it doesn't matter but just preference I guess. I'm going to then go to manage display and here I'm also going to move this up above the body field and the format is going to be as stars. You could, of course, show it, so it's only going to give the rate, the, a numeric rating or a percentage rating. I'll leave it at the default, but you want to click on this little settings icon over here. Now we can set what type of stars we want. There's a whole bunch of different options that you can look through. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the default. And then there's options to choose what value to display. So in this case, we're going to use the average vote, and that's the text to display under the stars as well, and we'll start with just that. 
So I'm going to save it, come back to the first test article, and you can see I can now rate this article. So I go ahead and rate it. It says that the average vote is 3. I can hop over here and log in as my test user. You could do this with anonymous users as well. I'm just using authenticated, but it is possible to make this work with anonymous. Go to test article 1. You can see the average. I can change my vote, but it still just displays the average. So even if I change it to 5, now it will show mine, but it will say the average is 4. You can change how that display ends up showing up by going to going back into the content type and you can sh you can show it so it will display both the users and the average vote if you wanted and that you can also have it show other things as well but we'll go through this one quickly if I hop back over here and refresh the page you can see it shows the average and your rating okay so we're gonna change that back quick so just to show the average and now the next step is to make it so it forces you to leave a comment in order to rate the item the first thing we need to do is in this manage display come back into the settings and uncheck this expose this filter field for voting this will make it so you will not be able to actually vote on the field so if I come back here it should display looks like showing the average it's not exposed for voting okay let's update it and s make sure we save it there we go you'll notice I'm no longer able to vote on this through here so now we need to add this stars field or this rating field to the comment form and then you need to link it up so the comment form actually affects the rating the actual average rating of the entire piece of content so we'll come back to comment field and this is important to, you want to use you want to add an existing field so you want to find the five star rating field in this case the article rating field that we created and this time for the widget you want to have stars rated while editing because you are seeing the comment edit form so you want to be able to actually change it while you're editing the comment or creating the comment so we'll go ahead and click save you can select the star display options we'll leave this at the default you probably want to make sure they match up especially make sure the number of stars matches up between the content type and the comment the voting target you want to select the parent node that way each comment as it's voted will filter up to the node level and you will affect the average that way so I'm going to move the rating field around a little bit and you then want to come into comment display so we're going to change the display to show the rating above the comment we're going to keep the format as stars we're going to then change this to show the user's vote instead of the average vote so we'll save this and we are now going to give this a quick go one thing you want to make sure make sure that in the permissions authenticated users have the ability to view and post comments by default they should but you want to make sure of that we'll first create one using the admin account so we'll come into test article 2 you'll notice I can't change the rating here but I can leave a rating on the comment form so I'll go ahead and save it you'll notice here's my rating for it's my comment and it also changes the average comment of the article now I come in as the other user I come to the test article 2 
you can see the average is 4, I can see the comment, and this person rated it 4, and then I can put in my rating. Now you can see there's two different ratings. You can see the average is now accurately displayed. So that's really all there is to the five-star module. You can do a whole bunch more with it, of course. But what it allows you to do is quickly and easily set up a rating system to rate various types of content on your Drupal website. So that's it for today on the Daily Dose of Drupal. As always, follow me on Twitter and Google+. I'll see you next time.